coming to the venous sinuses of the dura mater so as we saw between the two layers of the dura there can be a space so dural venous sinuses are spaces between the endosteal as well as the meningeal layer so this is the endosteal layer and between and the this is the meningeal layer in between sometimes usually they are as i said they are totally adherent except in some areas where they are separated and there is a space formed within them so dural venous spaces are nothing but spaces between the endosteal and meningeal layer of the dura mater except the inferior sagittal and straight sinus these are not uh, dural venous uh, exactly uh, to be specific between the the uh, the meningeal as well as the endosteal layer so these exception are the the inferior sagittal as well as the straight sinus except that all other are uh, dural venous spaces between the endosteal and the meningeal layer okay so these are the dural uh, the, the dural venous sinuses so because they are present between the two layers of dura so they are called as the dural venous sinuses what are the characteristic of these dural venous spaces one is they are lined by endothelium whenever they are present between the two layers of the dura mater they are lined by endothelium just like the vessels but they are devoid of muscular coat they are unlike the the veins and arteries because they don't have muscular coat the arteries and the veins will have muscular coat outside okay but these don't have the muscular coat and they are also they are unlike the veins because they are valveless usually the veins will have valves but here these spaces do not have valves so these are valveless uh, venous sinuses and they also absorb csf there will be arachnoid granulation later we'll see Uh, if you saw these pictures previously, maybe you can hear. Yeah, here you can see these are the arachnoid granulation coming from the the arachnoid subarachnoid space, and these will be absorbing the the CSF. Okay, so they are, they also absorb CSF through the arachnoid granulation tissue, and they collect blood from the brain, meninges, deploy orbit as well as the internal ear. so you know from all these regions they will collect blood from different parts of the the brain itself meninges deploy orbit as well as the internal ear and they will drain all these parts uh, of the venous blood so these are some of the characteristics and they also re receive emissary veins emissary veins are those veins which connect the the outer part of the skull with the in, inner cranial cavity okay uh, again if you see this pictures maybe they have shown you yeah here you can see these are the emissary veins okay so they are connecting the uh, the outer part of the skin of the skull okay skull cap with that of the the inner part of the cranium cavity so the infections usually which are there in the skull cap might be transferred into the uh, to the cranial cavity so so these are the emissary veins so these are some of the important characteristic features of the the dura vena cell one is they are lined by endothelium but they are devoid of muscular coat they are valveless and they have the function of absorbing the csf they collect the venous blood from different parts of the brain and they also receive emissary veins okay so here you can see so these are one of the dural venous sinus this is the superior sagittal sinus okay where there are two layers of the dura mater in between there is a space filled with venous blood and here you can see this is the arachnoid granulations and you can see that the arachnoid granulations are invaginating into the space and they absorb the uh, the csf uh, into the and this space dura venous sinus now coming to the classification of the dural venous sinuses the dural venous sinuses are classified into two types one is paired and the second one is unpaired so the unpaired will be the superior sagittal sinus then the inferior sagittal sinus straight sinus occipital sinus anterior intercavernous sinus posterior intercavernous sinus and basilar venous plexus these are the uh, seven unpaired dural venous sinuses coming to the paired one they are the transverse sinus the sigmoid sinus the cavernous sinus the superior petrosal sinus the inferior petrosal sinus spinoparietal sinus petrosquamous sinus as well as the middle meningeal sinus 
so all these are the the sinuses which will be the uh, the sinuses which are present within the uh, the dural space so here you can see the different uh, sinuses here this is the superior sagittal sinus which is in the midline and which is unpaired this is the inferior sagittal sinus so both these are the the superior and inferior sagittal sinus are the unpaired sinuses so this is the superior sagittal sinus as i said then this is the inferior sagittal sinus which is present within the fox cerebri then we have the straight sinus this is the third one this is the straight sinus then we have the occipital sinus it will be below it can be seen with this section we will show in the other picture so it will be below that will be called as the occipital sinus then anterior intercavernous sinus so the cavernous sinus are either on either side here they are paired cavernous so the two the cavernous sinus are communicated between the two there is a communication which is passing anterior to the the uh, infantibulum this is called as the the anterior intercavernous sinus similarly we have the posterior intercavernous sinus so there is anterior intercavernous sinus as well as the posterior intercavernous sinus then the finally the basilar venous plexus which will be below here that will be called as the the basilar venous plexus so basilar sinus okay so then the paired sinuses are the transverse sinus so transverse sinus you can see this is the right transverse sinus on the other side we have the left transverse sinus then we have the sigmoid sinus so this transverse sinus will continue in the front as the sigmoid sinus will show you this picture so this is much more better this is seen the cut section seen from above removing the brain this is the right transverse sinus this is the left transverse sinus okay then this transverse sinus contains as the sigmoid sinus a yes, shape structure so this is the sigmoid sinus okay then we have the uh, the transverse and sigmoid can then the cavernous sinus we already saw so these are the two cavernous sinus in the section as you can see here this is the cavernous sinus uh, within which the intercatheter artery is passing so these are the two sinuses cavernous sinus the main the largest and the main cavernous sinus where uh, all the veins in the cavernous sinuses will be draining all the uh, sinuses will be draining into the cavernous sinus okay then we have the superior petrosal sinus as well as the inferior petrosal if you can see here this uh, superior sigmoid, uh, sigmoid sinus will continue at the superior petrosal sinus here also you can see in this picture the sigmoid sinus is continuing at the superior petrosal sinus and below that is the inferior petrosal sinus on either side okay here you cannot see in this picture it will be below here okay that is the superior and inferior uh, petrosal sinus then the spinoparietal sinus spinoparietal sinus uh, okay here they have shown you this is the spinoparietal sinus on either side okay then we have petrosquamous sinus as well as the medial meningeal sinus all these are the sinuses which will be present within the cranial cavity okay now coming to the most important sinus among all the sinus that is the the cavernous sinus so these are the paired sinuses situated on either side of the body of the sphenoid bone okay so here you can see in this picture this is the the cavernous sinus on either side and these are the sphenoid and air sinus and this is the sphenoid bone so within the body of the same beside the body of the uh, spinoid sinus you can see the cavernous sinus and within the body of the spinoid sinus you can see this is the spinoid air sinus you should be able to differentiate the air sinuses from the uh, dural venous sinuses okay so these are the air sinuses okay uh, this is the spinoid air sinus and here is the cavernous venous sinuses okay so these are the paired uh, sinuses situated on either side of the the spinoid bone okay and extend from the superior orbital fissure so it extends from the superior orbital fissure in the front uh, uh, front to the apex of the petrosal uh, petrous temporal bone behind okay so in this picture you can appreciate okay this is the spinoid uh the cavernous sinus so anteriorly here this is the superior uh, uh, uh superior orbital fissure sorry so superior orbital fissure will be here okay through which uh, the uh, all the contents of the cavity of the uh, 
uh, the anticranial cavity will communicate with that of the the cavity of the orbit okay so here the structures will pass either they will be entering or coming out okay here is the superior orbital fissure so it extends from the superior orbital fissure in the front to behind to the the body of the the spinoid bone itself uh, petrous part of the temporal bone the measurement almost the length is uh, two centimeters in length and breadth is almost one centimeter the length is much more so we can see in this picture the length is two centimeter and the breadth is almost one centimeter uh, the structures passing are the most important the very important structures in relation to the cavernous sinus one is the as i said the internal carotid artery which is passing through this cavernous sinus so sometimes there can be a rupture of the the intercarotid artery into this cavernous so what happens we will discuss later so one of the very important structure passing through is the internal carotid artery and very important cranial nerves are passing through it one is the the abducens nerve itself so the abducens nerve has been shown here just below the the internal carotid artery this is the sixth cranial nerve then we have the the third cranial nerve that is the acromolar nerve then the two divisions of the trigeminal nerve that is the ophthalmic as well as the maxillary division ophthalmic as well as the maxillary division not the the mandibular division doesn't pass through here but the ophthalmic as well as maxillary division will be passing through this as well as even the uh, the fourth that is the trochlear nerve also passes through near the cavernous sinus so there are very important cranial nerves passing uh, uh, beside the cavernous sinus in very in uh, in complete contact and relation with the cavernous sinus as well as the internal carotid artery is also passing and in the center if you see this is the pituitary gland this is the pituitary gland in the separating the two cavernous sinus and superiorly we can see the optic chiasma so this is the infantibulum and here is the optic chiasma so very important relation above we have the the optic chiasma as well as the pituitary gland infantibulum and below we have the the spinodal ear sinus and within them with the, the intercarotid artery the third uh, cranial nerve the fourth cranial nerve the sixth cranial and the two parts of the fifth cranial nerve that is the ophthalmic and maxillary divisions coming to the relations as i said already um, gave you the relations medially and below we have the hypophysis cerebri that is the pituitary gland as well as the spinodal ear sinus laterally we have the k1 trigeminal on either side k1 trigeminal as well as the the uncus of the temporal bone what you are seeing here is this is the uncus of the temporal bone then above we have the optic chiasma as we can see as well as the the internal carotid artery okay sometimes it will be above in some parts and sometimes it is passing deep to the the uh, the carotid uh, the uh, the cavernous sinus itself coming to the tributaries what are the main tributaries which are draining into this cavernous sinus one is the superior ophthalmic vein then the the branch of the inferior ophthalmic vein the central vein of the retina most of the veins of the uh, eye and the eyeball will be draining into this as well as the super superficial middle cerebral vein then we have the inferior cerebral vein the spinoparietal sinus anterior trunk of the middle meningeal vein sometimes will be all uh, draining into this cavernous sinus this is the cavernous sinus here shown on either side this is the pituitary gland here is the spinodal ear sinus this is the intercarotid artery and all the cranial nerves important cranial nerves which are shown what what is the communication of this cavernous sinus it will be communicating with the transverse sinus through the uh, superior petrosal sinus you already saw then with the internal jugular vein through the inferior petrosal sinus and the the plexus of veins around the internal carotid artery also will be communicating with the uh, the cavernous sinus then the with the pterygoid venous plexus through the emissary veins pterygoid venous plexus is the plexus of vein which will be communicating again with the the cavernous sinus then the facial vein itself by the superior ophthalmic vein as well as the angular vein uh, into the trigoid venous plexus and also the deep facial vein all this will be draining into the uh, or opening or communicating with the cavernous sinus so any infections especially in the danger area of the face that is the lower part of the nose as well as the upper lip so any infection there can be directly uh, drained from the infection can be carried from 
that part through the superior ophthalmic vein or through the angular vein into the tegard venous plexus and from there into the uh, the cavernous sinus itself okay, or the deep facial vein directly draining into the cavernous sinus so easily the infections outside can carry it into the cranial cavity with the opposite cavernous sinus as you saw the two cavernous sinus are communicating with each other through the anterior and posterior intercavernous sinus with the superior sagittal sinus through the superficial middle cerebral veins as well as the superior anastomatic vein okay so these are some of the communications okay the important part is note uh, the uh, septic thrombosis of the cavernous sinus may be caused by the numerous communication from the dangerous area of the face or the orbit so any infections outside in the orbit or on the danger area of the face can be carried into the uh, the cavernous sinus and that might lead to septic thrombosis the internal cataract is sometimes as i said uh, there is a very important relation of the internal cataract passing through the cavernous sinus sometimes it might rupture into the cavernous sinus leading to arteriovenous communication where the artery and venous blood will be communicating with each other and it leads to a very clinical manifestation by the pulse uh, pulsating exophthalmus and loud systolic murmur over the temporal region and you can see the eyeball popping up every time with every second with the heart, beating of the heart so that is called as pulsating exophthalmus pulsating exophthalmus where the eyeball will protrude out and goes in protrude out and goes in with every uh, uh, beat of the heart okay and also you can hear the loud systemic murmur systolic murmur over the temporal region okay so these are the some of the communication here you can see the picture showing the ophthalmic veins draining into the cavernous sinus there is communication between the cavernous sinus on either side by the anterior and posterior intercomer uh, cavernous sinus and pterygoid venous plexus is here which will be again communicating into the cavernous sinus as well as you can also see the um, the basilar sinus also communicating with the the uh, this cavernous sinus and all this communication through the superior petrosal sinus the inferior petrosal sinus all will be communicating hi friends if you like my video and if you want to see similar kind of videos in the future subscribe to my channel as well as like the video press the bell icon so that you can get regular updates and you will be the first to get the updates then you can also comment as well as share this video with all your friends so that all can benefit from this thank you very much